Glocktavius Jr., Pookie and Ray Ray, and Drew Davion, okay? Got to show y'all, let me show y'all this real quick. See this? Look at these pictures, right? Now, this is an age-old tale, older than time, since Adam and Eve days, right? Y'all see, y'all gonna see a trend in what I'm showing you. Look, you see that? You see that? Look at that. That's the thuggish, bad boy criminal type of character, right? And the females showing thug love, all right? In each race, basically. You see this? Look at the pattern. Look at the trend. See this? See a female down, down bottom, female up top. See them throwing up the finger. Hispanic, black, white. See that? The jewels on his neck, tattoos on his hands. See the female on the side of the whip. So I'm showing you all a, a narrative that exists on a primal level. And I'm going to break down the red flags of how to know if a female you're interested in or you're talking to is into this type of, you know, uh, thugmatic uh, character. If they into this type of bullshit right here, I'm going to tell you the red flags to stay away from them. Okay. If they are into thugs. You see that? And our sister queens are notorious for loving gangsters and thugs, keeping our community downtrodden. Because if you procreate with Satan, you create seeds of Satan and children of the corn with the way that you're raising the offspring to be a neg on a negative vibrational frequency, which keeps the community in deviance and mischievous, right? But you see this, this now this right here is showing how even in the Edomite community, their women love the toxic bad boy type of dudes. That's what they, they women like the, the, the James Dean Knight Rider type, right? But it's a difference, it's a variant, it's a nuance. Because in our community, our bros tend to like over the top thugs, right? You know, if you grow up in any hood, you see all of the drug dealers and all of the thug niggas have all of the baddest women, right? Period. And the good dudes don't have, you know, pretty much none. Now, look at this right here. Even in a cartoon, you see the female trying to make primal eye contact with the tattoo face thug, right? So even it's even displayed in artifacts historically, right? These these cartoons from all different years, by the way, like like all different um, animation creations from going back. Like I think I the oldest one I just showed y'all was from like thirty years ago. That was the um, the white uh, John Dillinger looking character in the bar with the females, right? And if you don't know who John Dillinger was, that was another that was a, a criminal, right? But you see this? See them entertaining thugs. This pic, this this cartoon picture looks so real. It almost looks like a real photo, but that's actually a uh, like an anime. That's a cartoon image, right? You got to look closely to realize that that's actually not a real picture. Same with this one, okay? But y'all see this? That's a light skinned red bone female with a thug, right? Even in their even when they're younger. They're raised to be on that, that that type of ignorant shit with within our community, bro. They're socialized with the whole, with the whole thug love thing going all the way back to uh, Pac, but also that's part. And by the way, that's part of how Pac unfortunately lost his life, catering and placating to that image of Bishop, right? That that he really wasn't, right? To attract more black women, that's how he got tr in trouble with them with that female and Haitian Jack in them back in the day. Some of y'all ain't old enough to know. The details of that situation, right? But look at that. Trying to play that thuggish role too much, man. Look at this. Now, these are Bible thumping chicks of our community, but look at what they're really looking at. This is how they have a lustful, primitive eye for Pookie, Glactavius, and Drodavion, them, right? See? That's a realistic picture. You know shit is real when it turns into like like reality uh photos and shit like that where where they're making cartoons where where it has transcended 
okay, into the to pop culture, right? And you've seen shit like that too, even in the Boondocks episodes. You will see like Uncle Ruckus talk about shit like that. But it's, it is the truth though, you know? And I'm not pro-cooning, but I am telling you, it is a bad, devastating impact and effect that a woman's um, attraction to the serpent and, and hybristophilia attraction for criminals and evil men, that particular um, fetish that they tend to have is a true, true, uh, horrible, devastating thing to the community, bro, period. You know, there ain't no mention words about it. Uh, because you got to understand, if you date, replicate, and procreate with snakes, serpents, you raise the consciousness of Satan. So that's what they've done. That's why they've created, that's how they've created the whole drill culture mentality, which is an evil, um, dead of dead, worshiping, smoking on the, uh, our, brother, our own young brothers and shit like that, man. That's what that's representing. That's why they always say smoking on Tuka and all of that type of shit. That's evil shit, bro. That's evil. And our RIP to young brothers, man, who who were victims of those type of demonic uh, programs and, and systemic brainwashing, bro, of evil, right? So let's get a little music in this, and I'm going to go a little deeper to tell you all about the red flags that you have to be weary of and leery of in your life uh, when dealing with women of our community, bro, and, and, and just period. But I'm going to explain, like, because like this is even this applies even to others, right? Because every race of women, like I showed y'all, even in those cartoons, it displayed almost every race of women loving thugs, you know, and bad boys and criminals, and you don't want to feed into that negativity, right? Like in the Asian community, it's some called the triads, and the dragons. The women are crazy about them. If you go to Asia, uh, in the Italian community, it, it was always the good fellas and mobsters, the Tommy D's and and uh, Henry Hills and John Gotti's and Paul Verios and Jimmy Burks and the and Bridges was crazy about them. Uh, in the black community, clearly Pookie Ray Ray, Glactavius, uh, King Von, uh, uh, Drill Davion, and all of these type of cats, right? Uh, the, just that those, those are stereotypical names of of like the negative image, the old dog variations, right? And the Machiavelli vari variations as well, the Bishop variations of negative, hellacious type of dudes that these bras have glorified, bro. They have what they have done is sexualized and glorified, fetishing the thuggish image, and that does play a bad, bad scrimmage on the community. Okay, it destroys the community back. So, one of the things I want to tell y'all is this: I'll share two stories with y'all, and uh, I have to fabricate the names of these particular uh, females uh, that Ronnie too has experienced and encountered uh, at the corporate cotton field uh, as well as um, Chicago hot dogs, Chicago subs. No, Chicago, where was I at? Chicago subs or Chicago. Like a Chicago hot dog stand of some years ago. Anyway, um, I think it was, I think it was the sub, Chicago subs, if I'm mistaken. Whatever, whatever, whatever. This was years ago, but one thing I noticed, like, you have to notice red flags in certain behaviors and certain women. And one of the things that men are, are really weak and they really are, are real, real whack about in an Adam type of way. And when I say Adam, I'm talking about not just 22, but Adam from our, you know, our forefather Adam, from Adam and Eve. One of the weaknesses that we that we possess as men collectively is we don't have the a good ability of discernment, okay, as it concerns the red flags when when it comes to picking women and dealing with them, how we deal with them. Like we don't pay attention to the red flags of their behavioral uh, character traits. They do on the flip side, right? They're very uh, big on the ick factor versus the it factor and. The edge versus the ledge and all of that type of shit. They're big on identifying who's lame, who's not, who got game and all of that shit. Which really usually is just who they think is toxic enough to be sexually attracted to versus who they think is uh, too intelligent to the point that they call lame and don't see them as sexual. That's usually the, the deviance, right? The nuance, okay? Um, period. A lot of it has got to do with an image, but a lot of it do has to do with... Uh, 
a villainous reputation as well. And that's sick to say, but unfortunately, there's truth involved in it. So it's down there, Gorilla Biscuit. Bow your head for that truth. With Ronnie, too. So anyway, um, sharing two stories with you. So like, the, I think it was Chicago Subs years ago, back in the day, was this one female. I'm just going to call her Kiki, okay? Because she had one of them names that had like the double entendre to it. And I noticed something, uh, and I'm glad I noticed this. She was an attractive bad bitch. She was very attractive. Thick, red bone, curly hair. Looked like she was in shape. She wasn't the type that's thick with, with a sloppy uh, stomach with it. She wasn't that type. She was the type that was like, fit thick right very attractive but i noticed something god showed me something right now because i we was just about to you know saying get to the point exchange the numbers and, and do what it do you already know running two style do what it do uh because i already know a female is sexually feeling me when she starts saying can i feel your arms when she say oh, can i feel your arms and when she can and when she say can she touch my chest or my back that's why i tell y'all get back on swole too lord knows back in the day Brothers used to hit the weights. Even street brothers hit the weights, man. They was all on swole. They wanted these little buck 20, buck 30 dudes who depend on toolies and and shaking their hair and shit and, and moving feminine like females wearing skinny jeans and merces. That wasn't what it was back in the day. Brothers had to hit the weights back in the day. No matter what kind of, you know, they, they hit the heavy bags and the weights, bro. Just as a masculine rites of passage. Both in the joint and in the streets, bro. Real talk. That's just the truth. That's how it was back in the day. But anyway, bringing back full circle to what this female and uh, said. And by the way, for you brothers out there who, you know, who uh, hit the weights real hard, hit the gym real hard, do your pull-ups and push-ups and, and prayers and everything, like Ronnie too. For those of you who do work out and you develop your physique in such a way, whether it's stocky, like Bluto and Popeye, like mine, like Big Tookie style, or, or whether it's more ripped, like Diesel and Bruce Lee, um, you will notice when a female want to touch your arms and touch your your biceps, triceps, uh, chest, traps, back, when they get to doing stuff like that, a lot of times they're, they're crossing the physical barrier of sexual attraction. And a lot of times they're giving you a hint that they find you to be physically attractive, which is a good thing, right? In a primitive way, right? Now, so this particular chick, Kiki, right, I remember she wanted to touch the, the bicep peaks, right, and I will just kiss the bicep and turn my head, and I said, do you want to touch, she asked me because she touched the biceps, I thought she said she wanted to kiss the bicep peak, and I said, we'll see what it do, and I was going to exchange numbers with her, but then I noticed something. A little young crew of brothers walked in and they was flashing money and shit like that uh, while they was buying their food and they smelled like loud and cat piss and all of that shit, street shit. And I noticed it diverted her attention a certain way to the point where she would say she was just trying to help the youth and give them good advice. But really what she was doing was flirting with them in life. I paid attention to that. And you might say, oh, come on, running too. That's a little insecure, isn't it? No, it's not. It's a difference between insecurity and awareness. Like a lot of people mix up um, sensitivity and situational and operational awareness in life. You actually supposed to be spiritually sensitive to things in order to protect your life, to protect yourself from backdoor queens and things like that. Like I told you all in that Merlin Santana video. Right. So uh, luckily, I noticed it was God throwing me a bone because remember, the world's rejection is God's protection. The world's rejection is God's protection. Remember that. So Yahuwah, the Most High God, that's the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob, the God of black people, the God of the black Messiah, Yeshua Hadamajiak, right? His protection from you, for you often, oftentimes comes in the form of worldly rejection. So when that chick did that in front of me, it wasn't like she was rejecting me or nothing. Her attention was caught by the serpent. Like Eve's attention is always uh, caught by the forbidden one by the serpent. And it was meant for me to see that. So I don't, so I didn't socially negotiate with a serpent or inadvertently hurt myself not knowing. I'm talking about emotionally, socially, sexually, whatever, whatever. Because some of these bras are burning out here too. They're burning sexually on the low 
and you don't even know it. Some of them got the inferno in between the thighs. You don't know how many guys they've been dealing with, right? Especially if they fuck with the streets heavy like that. So anyway, this chick, I saw, let's just call her Kiki, he he and ha ha with all of these kiki ki ha 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 with all of these little dog niggas that was in there. And you might say, oh, don't prejudge them like that, Ronnie. Bullshit. The world w rotates on prejudgment. They flash your money. They think they're in a, in a fucking live drill music video in their mind. And they was trying to intimidate everybody in their own way, right? And, and, and the, the shit that they were doing, their behavior. I'm all about behavior. Like, you know, posturing and shit like that. They were trying to do like what they call G checks in, 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 uh, in the pen. And, you know, they, they were checking the temperature of the room for every, what everybody is, what they were doing, right? So they were doing all this ignorant shit, right? Um, and put it like this while they were doing that, she was he he ha ha and ki ki ka 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 type shit with them, but then she tried to paint it like she's just helping the youth, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, how are you helping them? You know what I'm saying? Because are you helping them by giving them positive um, information about how they could change their life and come to God? Or are you helping them by flirting with them vicariously, trying to feel like Stella got her groove back with dogmatic young niggas, right? Because you got to watch out for shit like that. A lot of bros will play with them semantics. And I didn't ask her about it, but but her conscience felt like she wanted to over-communicate and say this or that. But but see, I have eyes and I have, a, I have a, a, a what you would call a, a fully open third eye. So I'm, look, I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And you got to be able to pick up on energy. So that made me say negative. Nope, I'm good. I didn't want to exchange numbers with her at that point because she had just seeing her flirt with them thugs. It was like God wanted to show me that before we, me and her exchanged numbers. And you know what I'm saying? And I possibly uh, dipped into the inferno if you get my drift. Not to miss words too much on, on this goofy ass racial tube we on. Right? You already know how they feel about uh, Ronnie 2, the true Jew, supernatural ancient Hebrew. They don't like me and they don't like the wordplay and the gorilla biscuits. And the tricky, crafty semantics that I use, they don't like that, right? They program. I allegedly, I believe they program their algorithms to to shadow ban my videos, play with my numbers, play with with my uh, wordplay, even in comment sections, auto delete my comments and everything. Even when I say something as innocent and uh, nebulous as the word black, right? Because they know what's coming with that. I tell the truth. And demons fear truth, okay? And righteousness. Satan hates truth, righteousness, and high vibrations. And you might say, are you calling YouTube Satan? Uh, I, I, I'll say this. I do think they're in alignment with dark principalities for sure, okay? And that's just that, which, uh, you know, is, is typical in a modern world of Babylon that we live in, okay? With almost, see, a lot of social media platforms are a demonic demon medium for lesions to basically there are a lot of them they are social medias that creates a medium for people who have an allegiance to demons and legions and be Beelzebub to, to to coincide together to coalesce right to 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 correspond and connect right to collaborate so you got to understand what demonic technology, which we all use, you know, I'm not saying I'm above utilizing social media. I only use social media I use is YouTube, but it's still social media, right? Um, but the point that I'm making, and I only do that just to help y'all spiritually, right? That's the only reason I come on here. Because even right now, the red flags I'm telling y'all about with the Kiki chick is a perfect example um, of helping you out in your life, whether you know it or not, right? Because what I'm telling you is this. If you like are very very curious about a specific female and y'all about to exchange numbers or you're thinking about you know getting with a specific chick and seeing what it do you know what i'm saying just like fly guy running too you like just like me you thinking about okay what it do with this chick and you make a mistake in your calculation and getting with her you can mess your life up if you don't know that she's a chick for the streets and in the, in the nights bro you don't you if you don't see what I saw, see, I God allowed me to see that. And I have enough spiritual discernment and maturity to not be thinking with my, you know, lower head, but instead thinking with my upstairs. Right. 
we we can't be thinking with our lower head no more like our forefather Adam did. We got to think with our higher head like our forefather Yahshua did. You see, Yahshua was never weak for none of them, bro. That's why uh, he was not married. He had no kids. You know what I'm saying? And he was the Messiah because he was pure in every way, shape, and form, right? And I'm not saying we could be perfect and as pure as the Messiah, but we have to not let ourselves be thinking with the lower half of ourselves, but instead think with our higher consciousness. Because low vibration, lower half, lower self also equates to lower hell, if you understand the vibrational uh, ancient hermetic uh, chart, right? So when you when you are in a state of lust, that's low vibrational. That's why a lot of brothers bring hell into themselves on earth. And, and uh, a lot of brothers have passed away. They have died in that low vibration. You know, sad to say it, man. But rest in peace to Brother Merlin Santana. Rest in peace to Brother Trouble. Rest in peace to Brother FBG Cash. Rest in peace to Brother Mo3. Rest in peace to all of these brothers, bro, who have passed away one way or another uh, behind being in that lower vibrational state trying to uh, hang with a Jezebel. You know what I'm saying? Or get it cracking like with a Jezebel who, who have messed with people from the streets, right? And that's what I'm trying to give y'all for fair warning about in your life. If you see red flags that a female is attracted to street D, I don't care if you're a street nigga yourself, get away from her. You understand what I'm saying? Why do you think even in movies back in the day, like say for instance, and I hate to use Scarface as an example, but don't even mind thing, y'all, whatever. Like any like if you think about it, any movie you could think of, gangster movies and all, you know, this is across the boards. The, even the gangster dudes in the movies did not want the ratchet female. They wanted the Elvira, the Elvira, right? LV, as in Scarface said, the, they wanted the classier woman who not of the streets. It's a reason for that, right? Because dealing with street bitches who like street D, unfortunately, for many men, that's a, that's a, bro, that's the difference between freedom and jail and the difference between living your life or going to hell bro i'm telling you fam and you can think i'm bullshitting but if you think about it look at all of the brothers that have lost their lives bro behind something related to fucking with a bitch that love the streets seriously look at what asian doll herself said online after von died bro look it up look at what she said when she said she only liked dudes with you know what i ain't gonna repeat her words because they were so evil who got a bunch of you know what under their belts, right? And she ain't talking about fashion, okay? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I showed that uh, that video was viral some years ago. I showed y'all that, like, look at this type of behavior and mentality. And this is what so many of our so-called sister queens think like. The sickness of and, and the fetish of hybristophilia, which is the, the sexual fetish of street criminals, right? That's what that is. Okay, and, our, and the reason you might say, man, why you keep talking about the sisters? Because that's supposed to be our so-called queens, our so-called sisters. Think about the term. That's supposed to be our fucking family. That's supposed to be our wives. That's supposed to be the women of our community. So why should we let Satan just have them so willy-nilly and not give them uh, open rebuke, as the Bible would say? Open rebuke meaning tell them the truth about themselves, man. Because it says it's better to give open rebuke than concealed love concealed love concealed love is like a dangerous drug spiritually that's when you're giving somebody sweet lies and sweet nothingness and just letting them destroy their life our sisters need to understand the damaging ways that they're the damage of what they're doing in the community right uh with how they operate with loving street d even Pac did us a, a great disservice with that thug life bullshit he did. And, and you know what I'm saying? And I got mad love for Pac as a, as a, I speak of Pac all the time because he's one of the f a few rappers that I met in real life. Right? Real talk. And y'all know the story. Y'all know my, uh, you know, my uh, catalog. You already know verbatim what the story was. So I ain't got to go into how I met him and all of that and what he said. And saw, and that he signed a little CD thing. That was CDs back in the day. Was, that was before a lot of y'all time. But the point that I'm making is uh, I do believe the thug life thing in retrospect that he was pushing was a, even though I know it was an acronym, it was a, a catchy acronym, but if you understand the detriment of, of someone so great pushing thug culture, even if it is a tricky acronym like the hate you gave, it was like the hate you gave us, um, 
the hate you gave the little ones something 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 after the, it, it, it was something i can't remember by heart but it was an acronym like the hate you gave little infants uh effed everything up or something like that that's what thug life stood for something close to that at least back when in our day when Pac really came up with that shit some of y'all ain't you know wasn't around back in those days so y'all might know the 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 research from books and Harvard and all of this shit, because they got courses about Pac now, but I remember the real nigga, the real Pac himself. Okay, so speaking on what I remember, the interaction was with him and shit of that nature, I do feel like looking back, Thug Life was a detriment in anything worshiping thugs and gangster and criminalization uh, in our community in particular, because we're the genetic Jews of the Bible, man. We're the Yahudim. God punishes us harder than everybody else. Because we're his real chosen people. So so all of that. Because a lot of y'all might say, man, well, what about Italian mafioso culture? What about Goodfellas culture and Godfather culture and all that? That's all horrible shit too, but that's not our people. Those are the Romans, biblically. Those are the ones, those are the people who slew Christ on the cross. Those are the the, um, the caucus, Edomites, Esau and them. Uh, that's what Italians are. They're, they're not uh, black, right? They're not the genetic Yahudim. And I'm not trying to make it all race. But it's especially heinous when our people glorify the thug image, bro. For real. We weren't supposed to ever th glorify thuggish and gangsterism. And our women have developed what I believe now is an evolutionary biological deficit as a formality of a sexual fetish for hybristophilia and criminality. You know what I'm saying? Of thug love. Now it's in their epigenetic profile to be attracted to low vibrational satanic thug men. And that, that's affecting, that's devastating our communities because that's where they're uh, dating, mating, and procreating with it exclusively. A lot of people don't notice it, but it's the truth. You know, the only reason I notice it because I'm a genius and it's a, a rare thing to have a genius brain, right? You know what I'm saying? And when you're a genius, people say, oh, is it a fine line between genius and madness? A genius and insanity, people say things like that about all geniuses. They said the same thing about the real Jesus. Yahushua, right? Which is the real name. Yahweh Shai, by Shem Hedemajiak, right? So genius is, like some of y'all might watch this and think, oh, dude a little, you know what I'm saying? He a little off, he a little crazy because he says shit so real with no filter. On this racist ass too, he ain't not playing the real Matrix game. He's like a glitch in this bitch. And salute to brother Mike Jones who always say, bro, you like a glitch. The same thing to salute brother Marco. I, I take y'all words in kind because y'all are Damn near geniuses yourselves, man. And when smart brothers think highly of other sophisticated, intelligent brothers, that's, that means a lot. Iron sharp and iron. Uh, so salute to y'all who know I am like a glitch in this bitch in a good way. So I'm just telling all of my brothers out there, man, the true Yahudim, uh, genetic Hebrew Jew man of the world, be careful not to be attracted to the broads who have thug love. And when I say not to be attracted with them, I mean... Don't be acting on your attraction. You're going to be attracted to attractive women naturally. Uh, no matter uh, what, you're going to have natural primitive attractions, right? But you need to learn how to condition yourself to do away with being attracted to the ones who have bad behavioral traits. Do away with the, uh, being attracted to the ones who love street D and thugmatic uh, drill culture and gangster uh, dudes. If they like gangsters and thugs in any way, shape, or form, and that's a part of their pedigree and their history, if their ex and their baby daddies and all of that are thugmatic in, in, in any form of Pookie Ray Ray or Glocktavius or Drill Davion in them, if their baby daddies are any of them type of niggas, bro, you don't need to deal with them, I'm telling you. And I'm going to give you an, uh, another example uh, that just recently happened that turned my stomach. See, I've created a level of, well, God has given me a level of discernment that can turn my stomach when I'm around evil. One second. So yeah, I'm back. So like for instance, God gave me a level of discernment spiritually to where it turns my stomach if I'm around evil and if I'm around people who worship, glorify, and pedestalize evil. That's why I talk so negatively against drill music and drill culture, even though I'm from that literally um, epitome, you know what I'm saying, and origin of where that music and culture come from, right? Literally. <clears throat> Excuse me. And even gangsterism culture pretty much down there originated in this city down there back in the Al Capone era. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So the point I'm making is 
You know, just because you come from certain places don't mean you got to glorify and pedestalize the, the, the degeneracy and the reprobate behavior of that culture, right? Just because you black don't mean you got to act like you're a descendant of somebody who smoked crack. You don't have to act wild and sick in the head and, and ratchet and just ignoramus, bro, like an orangutan, bro, just because you're a black person. Because what you don't know is you're the real genetic Jews. You're the true Yahudim of the Bible, bro. That means you're your who was chosen people. So imagine that you're related to the Messiah and y'all want to act like that. Come on, man. That ain't a good look when you know who you really are. And blessings to Vladimir Putin for putting out those Russian icons in that cathedral that he did, which lets our people know who we really are, too. But, um, but yeah, and that's a whole nother video. But the point that I'm making with y'all brothers, like just recently I had a situation um, where this one female... She'll remain nameless. I damn near don't know this chick name for real, though. She work at the corporate cotton field, the corporate plantation matrix, whatever, you know, what y'all call it, nine to five. And it don't matter where. I always say it don't matter if you work at Whack Arnold's or BK Have It Your Way or you're a motherfucking custodial worker uh, or a Fortune 500 company. It don't matter where you work or what you do. It's all the same corporate policy matrix that brothers get neutered in, really. Okay. And, uh, you know, the emasculation rituals of corporate policy. With any job, for the most part, everybody got to endure, right? The hamster wheel bullshit. But the point that I'm making, that's why I always stay prayed up. And uh, I'm going to teach y'all uh, something called imprecation prayers, too. Imprecation prayers is deep. That's another video, a whole another like, hour or two video that's very important. Um, it's, 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 it's connected to adversarial prayers, adversarial prayer rituals, how you can pray similar to how Christ did, okay, uh, against thy enemy, uh, quietly, spiritually, with your Bible and your cross, okay? And you pray to Yahuwah, Barashem Yahushua, Barashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, Barashem Yahweh Shai, Eli, Eli, Adonai, El Yeshua, Tai El Shaddai, Eli, Eli, Elham, Adonai, Shalom, Shalom, peace to unclean, instill to unclean spirits. In the name of the Elham, revelation of God, Yahuwah, Barashem Yahushua, Yahweh Barashem Yahweh Shai, Barashem Harmajiyak Yahweh Shai, Eli Eli Adonai, El Yeshua Tai El Shaddai. Amen. But anyway, so um, so yeah, so this this one chick right recently at the corporate cotton field, she's a light skinned chick, red bone, you know, you could tell she was thicker back in her day. She ain't, she's not young and she ain't real old. But, you know, women, they age like, like, um, women kind of age like milk and bread, okay? They, they like, age in, like, dog years, like bitch years. I ain't trying to be funny, but it's the truth. Because of the way they're wired, they're wired to be at, like, their apex when they're, like, in their early 20s, at the, at the epitome of their, you know, fertility years and their youth, right? Like, when they're, like, you know, 23, 24, that's at their heights, of their life, bro. They're like rock stars. Women are all rock stars, usually for the most part, if they're decent looking. Uh, they don't even got to be all that, but when they're like 23, 24, that's the tippy top for them. But after like 25, their looks slide all the way down. Where a lot of us brothers, we're like ambiguous in looks. So even though I'm older, a lot of younger bros, you know, grown, of course, do try to get at me, get with me on certain levels. I am the fly guy, Ronnie, too. Right. So and I told a freak if she wants to, she can kiss the peaks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if since she acts politely, you know what I'm saying? But all bullshit aside, I, I'm just uh, joking um, on that. But the point that I'm making is this on a real tip. This is realer than a real tip, bro. Straight up. This is a gorilla biscuit. This, this happened just like three days ago. I noticed something. I was at the corporate cotton field whatever, whatever, doing whatever we have to do. And it's this one female has been a, a ongoing thing where this one chick, she always speak to me and always come forward. That's another, that's a good sign when a woman comes forward to you, always wants to commu initiate communication with you, interpersonal communication and over communication and always has a zeal to want to talk to you fellas. That's a good thing. That's a sign that a woman is romantically attracted to you, by the way. Women only speak to men that they're romantically attracted to in general. Remember that. 
That's a powerful truth right there. You what you would never really see women going out of their way to speak to men that they find no romantic, romantic attraction to, especially as us black brothers. They'll speak to white men they don't have no attraction to because they have a zaddy complex, all of them. But the, the, the white dude can look damn near like a bootleg Jeffrey Dahmer and they'll be cackling like ha, ha, in his face telling him he looks beautiful, right? They do that because they all, most of our sisters got clone complexes anyway. Real talk. But the point that I'm making is when is when when women, period, go out of their way to talk to a black man all the time, usually there is some romantic interest and attraction there. I'm not telling you to act on it. I'm just saying that what it is, a lot of times in the back of their minds that propels them to talk to you. Women don't even give you good customer service unless they find you to be mildly or highly attractive. It's just their nature. They're primal like that. Patrice O'Neill was right about them. They're right, he, he was right. They're like that. Well, they're different than that. Like we can give everybody good customer service and shit. As men, we don't care how a person look. We're gonna give you good customer service because we know the consequence involved with not treating people with respect. You know what I'm saying? But women don't have to even think in that way. So if you're not attractive, expect horrible customer service from mostly all broads, especially black broads, and anywhere you go. And you know, y'all know that's a fact. If you think about the roller decks of your life, real quick, that's a gorilla biscuit. So anyway, let me get a little quicker than Nestle quick um, with this shit because it's taking me too long to get to the point of this. So there's one chick, I don't even know her name like that, but she always try to talk to me. And a lot of times I do be, I be busy and I don't be seeing her that much, but she always clock me like when she see me and when she don't. Because on the low, I heard that she wanted to cock G, right? Uh, but the point that I'm making is, me and her was going to get together. Once again, she said, oh, I need to do what you don't like. I need to work out like you. That's that's one of their ways of flirting. That's one of the reasons, too, to get your body tight, fellas. Get back in shape. Okay? Like I said, even if you're on the huskier side, but at least they can tell you work out. Like, right? Because I'm not saying I'm all muscle. I'm fussle. Right? But it's still visible. You know what I'm saying? That Ronnie, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do what it do. Right. But the whole point is this. She was like, I need to work out like you. Well, I knew then she wanted to get it cracking like on another low, way on the low. So I just once again, we I, I was going to change numbers and that. But the office had called her and we didn't get a chance to. And then she like took a leave of absence uh, for whatever reason. I don't know her business like that because I don't care to ask. That ain't my business. But what is my business that I did notice is just when she came back the other day. Like all last week, she was trying to flirt with Ronnie too. Every time she seen me, she was looking for Ronnie too. Me, you know what I'm saying? Fly guy Ronnie. She was like, "Is that a bird? Is that a plane? Is that a UFO or something?" Or no, that's that's Fly guy Ronnie. Where is he at? But she really was looking for me because all my little homies was like, "Hey, oh girl, keep looking for you. She just want to see you, talk to you, whatever." But then what God once again threw me an alley hoop and showed me why I had to reject her. Unfortunately, and she's an attractive chick. She looked like a doppelganger of er of Erica Badu. Minus all of the like voodoo head wraps and all of that type of shit. But she looked like her, the hazel eyes and all that. Light skin head was the hazel eyes. Uh, uh, still attractive to be in her 30s. I think she's in her 30s. She's younger than me, but but she still ain't no young broad. Like, because see, for a broad, once they get over 24, 25, you know, I'm kind of like Leonardo DiCaprio on that shit. Like, I understand how they start molding, right? Because you can't really psychologically and socially or spiritually mold them in any way, shape, or form when they get more, like, real old and bitter. And I ain't talking about no young, young shit. I'm talking about legalities. Ain't nobody on R. Kelly shit, but I'm talking about from the age of 19 to, like, 25. You know what I'm saying? They have the, their most mentally, like, they're less bitter is what I'm getting at. They don't have all of that baggage between, I'll say, 19 and 24, they don't have all that baggage, fam, usually, unless they live in a real horrible lifestyle. And these days, a lot of them are. But the point that I'm making is this. For her, for the old girl to be in her 30s, because most of these broads, especially black chicks in their 30s, these days, they be looking like 92 years old with tattoos on their face and flaccid skin everywhere and, and green and purple and blue uh, wigs on like, like uh, bootleg sexy reds. You know, and they're like walking, talking uh, Sukiyana lyrics and shit these days. It'd be a lot of bad spirits on them. 
So I, so I, you know, try to avoid that type of shit. But anyway, this chick, she take care of herself. Erica Badu, doppelganger, she looks like. But the point that I'm making to y'all, fellas, is this. You have to notice the red flag that I notice, right? Here's the catch. If you see them around thugs and gangster type of cats, even in the workforce, if they, if you walk past them and they're socializing with thuggish individuals who smell like weed and drink and all of that, do not bring yourself down to their level to talk to them or interact with them. You have to officially be better than that type of individual. You have to. If for your own, it's really for your own spiritual sobriety, but it's also for your own freedom in life and your safety in life. You have to know that you're better than that ignorant thug gangster culture bullshit. That are, that's destroying our community. You are better than that. Period. And you have to know you're better than that. And not saying that you got to do it, do that in, in like a cocky way. But what I realized with, with her, I saw her flirting, flirting with this one cat. And he looks like the doll of Chucky. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this cat, I, and I know the cat, your colleague, he real negative. He's like the king of low vibrations. Like, I'm like the king of high vibration spirits. He's like the king of low vibrations. All of that ignorant street shit. And he's a colleague. I believe he's some kind of, I don't know. I believe they hired him just to purposely get people to act like him so they can get people fired. I've never seen anybody act as unprofessional as him in any place ever. Right. And, you know, y'all come across people like that in every gig. Like I said, I don't care if it's Whack Arnold's, BK, have it, Burger King, have it your way, uh, uh, Subway. Uh, I don't give a fuck where you work. Right. It's all the same. You always come across somebody that's the most unprofessional ever to where you almost feel like they some kind of mole or plant to get you fired. Right. Because if you mirror their behavior, you know, the type of people always come late every day. Uh, leave early, them type of people. He wanted them type of cats. You know, just just all kind of ignorant shit, right? Um, and I'm serious about that. And I ain't on no coon. I ain't no, I'm not one of these over-the-top, overly professional type of pre people, but it's a level of ethics that you do got to have and character even in the workplace, right? For a point blank period. So anyway, the point I'm making is if I ever see the females that's interested in me show any interest and any socialization with him, and this ain't no jealousy, no envy. This is more so disgust than trust. I have no attraction to that person anymore instantly. And I, God sent me to just be walking past at a certain time. Old girl didn't even know it. Uh, and I was in a zone on my lunch break walking past. And this female, she was, I noticed she was positioned in a way where she was like eating lunch with that, that cat, right? And like I said, this cat is like the king of all low vibrations. This motherfucker is like literally satanic. Like, you know when people are satanic when all they care about is the drill culture, Dirk, and all of that type of shit. Also, all they listen to is drill music. All they watch is those drill documentaries. All they talk about is, is shit like, you know, all of that type of just low vibrational shit, bro. Like no jumper and... And uh, gang culture, gang politic type bullshit. And just all he think about and talk about. This motherfucker is so remedial, bro. That he don't even really speak English no more. He speaks in drill language. He says shit like, bop, bop, oh, wah, wah. This motherfucker is like devolving into a Neanderthal. And that's what they're doing to our community. They're making, if these dumbass rappers are making y'all turn into like some kind of cryptid. Some kind of fucking cave creature type of thing, man. They turning y'all into Crow Magnet man all over again with 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 this low vibrational remedial shit. This motherfucker can't even articulate a full sentence. Not because he's like has a speech impediment or nothing. It's because he's giving himself one. Real talk. So the point that I'm making is a woman in her thirties has no business even flirting and talking to a young 22, 23 year old tatted out, uh, drill culture minded type of dude like that. You see what I'm saying? So just seeing that made me say, no, I'm not going to engage with her sexually or otherwise. I'm not going to even exchange numbers with her or nothing because that's what she's looking to do with me. She not worth it. See, a lot of y'all not. And when I say y'all, I'm talking about in general, a lot of brothers don't understand. We have to take red flags serious, too. See, women do know that, like I said, on their end, trust, trust me, they don't just slip 
and fall on a banana pill in a toxic relationship. Women are very cerebral. They clock in every behavior. A lot of times they only mess with a man because the man is toxic and they want to do toxic trauma bonding with that toxic man. That's why they play captain, save a nigga to thug niggas and drug dealers and ignorant niggas because the reason that they do that is because they have what you call a, a weird biological maternal instinct that's triggered by low vibrational men who remind them of serpents and Satan who are broken. They feel like they have to fix up, be a fixer up to those types, right? And here's here's the whole catch. What you have to learn to understand for yourself for this social, emotional, and spiritual discernment reasons, you have to learn how to keep yourself from engaging with, with the type of chicks who have that type of a fetish for the streets, period. I don't care if you do got that image, you shouldn't want no female who have that image and have that, that type of mentality that she deals with gangsters and thugs and criminals. Because even if she's just breaking bread with them, like that one Kiki chick tried to front like she's trying to help save the youth, and she wasn't. She, If y'all saw what I saw in that situation a couple years ago, she was flat out flirting with them young niggas when they pulled out all that money. And they knew it. They was like, oh, she going, folks. They was talking like that. Like, she going, folks. She going. So you think them niggas ain't saying that shit for nothing? I'm watching the shit as I'm waiting on my food type shit. So anyway, uh, and keep in mind in both of these situations, these are two rare bone attractive women that you would least expect to be like this. But here's the catch. Even some of our upper echelon women have fetishes for the lowest class vibrational men in our community. Even some of the most high rise level women love the lowest level snakes in our community. And that's some sick shit for Christ's sakes, man. But it's the truth. And nobody else says it like Ronnie too. It's, the, it's just, it's the flat out truth. But, but sometimes people don't say things like I said, because they, they genuinely like psychologically can't process it. That's why I try to slow it down for y'all and put them in, put it in layman's terms for real. Even for the lame niggas in the back of the bus, real talk and the literal Larry's in the front of the bus and the scary Sherry's on the side of the bus. I try to break it down in such a way, bro, for my people to really understand it and the people's people to understand it. Even, even the seeds of Satan can understand the truth because those are the vibrations that spiritually destroy Satan, right? Is the truth and high vibration destroys Satan. That's a fact. Remember that. Ronnie said that. Spiritually, you can destroy Satan with high vibrations and truth because the devil is a spirit of deceptiveness, creepiness, and secrecy. Okay, but yeah, man, I just want to share this with you because a lot of people don't tell you this. You as a man got to develop spiritual discernment and character discernment. You got to learn how to be like, nope, that's a red flag. Don't I'm not dealing with her. She got a spider web tattoo on the side of her fucking face with an orange wig on. And a piercing that says Satan. Nope. A lot of brothers will be like, well, I take that. You know what I'm saying? That's a bad thing to think. Like that, when you're thinking downstairs, instead of thinking upstairs, bro, you're going to really find yourself in an in, in an eternal inferno of hell in your life. That's what happens when men think low with the downstairs and not the upstairs. You got to find women who can stimulate the upstairs because they, they mentally live upstairs too. And they're disgusted and grossed out by the savage thug image and ignorance. That's the only type of broad that qualify for me. That's that one is that that's also disgusted by the, the ignorance imagery and the ignorant thoughts of Satan. I don't I don't I don't want the type of broad that's that's in my company that's ever uh, uh, flirtatious with Satan that ever thinks the serpent and some toxic uh, gangster thug uh, bootleg uh, bootylicious gangsterlicious ass rapper image. Dramatic image, Octavius image. I, uh, I don't want no broad that think that shit is cute or cool. So if I even see a broad thinking that shit is cute and cool and she's breaking bread and spending energy and conversation with them type of dudes, she can't know Ronnie too. Ronnie too would turn his back on her. And, and, and kiss the double biceps. And all she'll see is my back walking away. She'll see all that she could have had in the future walking away for good. Real talk. I don't give a damn if I live in the hood. Fuck that. Uh, it's all about elevating your vibration, bro. 
and really saying your prayers. Yahuwah Kodesh, El Kodesh prayers to the Most High God. Yahuwah Barashem Yahushua. And Barashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh. Barashem Yahweh Shai. Eli, Eli, Adonai, El Yeshua, Tai El Shaddai. Eli, Eli, Adonai, El Ham. Shalom and peace to the Spirit. Peace to my son, guys, man. Real talk. For real. The real Israel, man. Our people in this world, man. The genetic Yahudim. But, man, for real, for real. Hopefully y'all feel what I mean on that shit. Do not give the best of yourself to the worst of these type of broads out here, man, who love that street D and who love that that ignorant beef culture shit, drill culture bullshit. That shit is destroying our community more and more and more. And I don't give a damn if you all think, oh, it's just music. No, it's not, bro. That is satanic, ritualistic shit. That is something called Santa Morta on the low, which is, if you think about it, what do they talk about ritualistically? They, they literally in their music talk about smoking on the dead. That is what they do in the satanic rituals, bro. That's evil Baphomet shit, bro. Our people got to get up out of that low vibration uh, entertainment. And we got to stop in real life entertaining even the type of bros who think that shit is cute, cool, and think that toxic is what's up. Because it's not, bro. And on that note, The true greatest legend on YouTube, Ronnie Two. Salute. Oh, show me some donos, man. Some not some donuts, but some donations. Right? Uh, real talk, I ain't got no donations in a while, bro. Uh, last donation I got, I think, was Brothers Stank Dollar. I mean Skank Dollar. Salute to you, Brother Skank Dollar. Uh, you know, I'm trying to remember y'all names by heart, man. So no offense if I said it you know, uh wrong. But I think it's Skank Dollar. Appreciate the donation, bro. Um but yeah, that was the last one I got. Y'all can show me some love, man. Show me some donations. You know, I, I do these videos from the heart. You know what I'm saying? And from the spirit. And I got a lot of spirit and a lot of heart. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I want I want the best for y'all. I don't even have to know y'all to know y'all, man. I want the best for y'all out there. Because I know we all live a mirrored Truman Show life as the true chosen ones, the true Yahudim, the true genetic Jews from the Bible. We have all lived a similar life where we've been gang stalked by society and shit like that um and it's some of the same ritualistic satanic racial abuse and things like that that a lot of us go through but our women have all of the same brainwashing we got to keep in mind when willie lynch indoctrination of 1706 really destroyed our people bad it gave them a real low 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 frequency and a lot of insecurity demons that fester in their spirits bro and it's hard for our people to hear it but they got to know it the truth shall set them free man but remember avoiding the devil and even avoiding the devilish jezebel spirit can di can be the difference between jail and freedom bro real talk talk and spiritual life and spiritual death biblically real talk that's real because there's a lot of brothers no longer in here bro in the world because they didn't listen to the higher intuition spirit and look at the red flags and say, you know what? No, nah, I'm good on that. I don't care if she do got a fat ass. She's entertaining Pookie and Ray Ray and Octavius and them. I'm cool. Nope, nope. You got to be able to turn your back on them types, bro. I'm telling you. And only entertain the kind that got not only class, but got spiritual discernment. Real talk. Because like, for instance, Kiki and this other chick that will remain nameless from the corporate kind of field. They seem classy if you were to meet them. They don't seem unclassy until you see what's really happening on a primal level that they're attracted to that Satan. See, I know when a woman is flirting, not only just with me, but when, but with somebody that's unworthy of knowing me, right? And and that's the situation, right? She's flirting with a nigga that only don't even speak English. He speak drill drillism or dramaticism. He speak a whole nother language. He sound like a human chief key lyric. You know what I'm saying? Like bop, 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 I'm up. So all these niggas talk, just, just ignorant shit, bro. And on that note, salute.